Good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm in sunny London today. First of all, I want to say a massive thank you for all of your views and comments and shares over on my uh, most recent video. I had a feeling it might be a popular video, but I had no idea that it would catch on as much as it did. And if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you go and check it out and share it with any of your friends that you think might find it interesting too. Oh, another thing I wanted to say was thanks for those of you that have gone and uh, followed me on Twitter as well. I also went on Periscope and did some live feeds on my Twitter account. Uh, and I'd love to do more of those because they were really popular. So uh, make sure you go and follow me on Twitter. Now I've had loads of people asking me questions, but the one question that comes up the most is what are your settings for street photography and just for your photography in general? So thank you those that have been asking and uh, today I plan to cover that topic and show you what settings I use on my camera for my photography. But before we get started on my photography settings, I'm going to take you over to my favourite coffee shop in London, which is Monmouth Coffee. It's quite small inside, but they just make the best coffee. said in the couple of uh, photography basics videos that I've done, in my opinion the best way to learn about using your camera is to put it in automatic or in P mode, which is the same thing, and just go out and start shooting in automatic. That way you can focus on the things that really interest you in photography, like composing a good picture, capturing great moments, learning about light and exposure and then over time slowly learn about the manual settings like aperture, shutter speed and ISO and exposure compensation, those four things. Learn about those so that when the camera isn't behaving as you expect then you know what settings to change to get the photo that you want. Having said that, although I know how to use my camera in manual mode, I still pretty much always shoot with it in automatic. Except for one or two little things that I like to have my specific settings on. It's only really when the lighting conditions get quite challenging, uh, like when it's dark or there's very bright sunlight and lots of shade as well, that I have to change the settings to get the result I want. But also if I want to do a specific effect, like having something blurry or having the background more out of focus than the foreground and things like that, then I'll change the settings. And if you watch my shutter speed and aperture um, tutorials on my channel, then uh, I'll talk to how I get those effects. Right, I found somewhere I'm going to sit down so I can go into a bit more detail. Now this camera has excellent ISO capabilities. Now, bear with me. What that means is, if you don't know about cameras, that the more sensitive you make this camera to light by pushing the ISO up, the less degradation of quality you get compared to other cameras. So essentially, in dark conditions, this camera still produces really clean images. What that means is that I'm happy to push this camera to about 1600 ISO and still be happy with the quality. So I can leave the aperture and shutter speed generally in automatic. Having said that, I want to make sure that the camera doesn't go below 125th of a second shutter speed. Uh, otherwise, the stuff I'm taking photos of, unless I'm really still, is going to be blurry. So in the menus of this camera, I set an automatic ISO function where the base ISO is 800 and the ISO limit is 1600. 
and I tell it to not let it go below 125th of a second. Now, onto aperture. I know a lot of street photographers like to shoot um, in aperture of f8 to f16, that kind of thing, to make sure they've got everything in focus. But uh, my particular type of photography, uh, I like to keep the aperture as open as possible because I like to get that separation between the background and the foreground. So for that reason, I usually keep an eye to make sure that the aperture is staying nice and open. Now, one last thing to point out, uh, which loads of you guys have been asking me about, is whether I shoot in RAW or in JPEG and use the film simulation modes in this camera. Because I like to have complete control of the editing process of my photos, I always shoot in RAW. And although the film simulation modes on these Fuji cameras are quite nice, they're not quite how I like my photos. And it also means you have to shoot in JPEG. If you're new to photography, the advantage of shooting in RAW is that when you put it in the computer, you get a much higher quality image, which means you have a lot more to work with when you're editing without losing quality in the photo. So I hope that covers everything about my settings. And please let me know below if you have any more questions. Just in case I haven't covered everything, I'm just gonna show you the Q menu in my camera so you can see if there's anything I missed. Okay, now I have four minutes to get to work. It should be fine. If you're ever in Covent Garden, take this little street, Rose Street, and check out this cafe, they do the best pastries. Okay, I'm all sorted. Now off to work. Okay, I've just finished work. It's gone grey in London, never mind. You might still be able to see makeup around my face. To recap what I was saying earlier, my camera settings for my general photography, unless the lighting conditions are particularly unusual, they are always in auto. For me, the most important thing when I'm out in the street is to be able to quickly take a picture without thinking about it. I know the camera's gonna perform in a certain way, so all I need to do is frame the shot and quickly take the picture. And it really doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. I know at the moment I'm kind of always around the centre of London, but uh, I'm looking forward to having more time in the summer to show you some of my other favourite places in London further out. Maybe, if you guys want it, I'll do a video on my favourite places in London and the kind of hidden spots that you don't normally get to see. So if any of you guys are visiting London, you can visit my favourite spaces. Leave a comment below if you want to see that. And maybe I'll work on that one in the summer. For this effect, I would put the shutter speed down to maybe a fifteenth of a second so that the train would be blurry, but the platform would still be in focus. I'll show you what I mean. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching today's vlog. As usual, make sure you subscribe to my channel and please check out my Instagram and also my Twitter account because I'm going to do more on there too. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.